This is where I live. I'm a housewife. My name is Ellen Jones. That Tuesday in July started out just like any other day the past few months. There was no warning it was to be the most terrifying day of my life. I remember thinking how tired I felt. Even the housework seemed drudgery. And so meaningless with George confined to his bed. No one to see or care even. And then I got scared. Because I knew I was beginning to feel sorry for myself. George was the one who was ill. And he needed all of my thoughts and attention. And above all, my cheerfulness. I tried not to think about us, about George. How he'd changed. I told myself it was just my imagination that things would be different when he was well and strong again. Then I thought I heard him call. George, did you call? George, are you all right? Yes, Ellen. You want anything? Not now. I've just begun work on an insurance report for the office. Well, call me, dear, if you need me. Okay. Somehow, I had an odd feeling. There was something about George's voice. I found myself thinking about the first time we'd met. How different he was in those days. I remember I was sitting in Dr. Graham's office. We were talking. I played one game of checkers and two games of rummy. And I written letters to a wife, a mother, and a sweetheart. And I listened for a half an hour to a homesick young ensign from Texas. He was awful cute. Now, what else can I do to help boost the morale around here, huh? You could go out to dinner with me. <laughs> we get about halfway through the soup, you get a call from the hospital. You're right. Mm -hmm. I guess my courting will have to wait till after the hostilities. <laughs> There's a compound fracture down the hall who's waiting to see me, but I'll be tied up for a while. Oh? They tell me he's feeling blue, you see. His wife's expecting a baby in a minute. And I think he can stand some cheering up. It's practically done. See you later, Ed. Oh, I'm sorry. They told me I could find Dr. Graham in here. You ought to be along any minute. Why don't you come on in? Sure, thank you. Are you a patient here, sir? <laughs> in a naval hospital? No, no. I'm just a friend of the docks. Flew in last night with a ferry command. The only thing wrong with me is a double barrel hangover. <laughs> Too bad. Dr. Graham will be detained, so I'm taking you for an airing. And maybe he doesn't want to go for an airing. He doesn't. There's nothing a woman likes better than shoving a man around. I'm Ellen Brown. Doesn't suit you at all. It's much too plain. Oh, I'm sorry. I tell my parents about it, but they're still back in Kansas City. Now, what can I do for you, young man? I can think of a lot of things. Oh? Well, shall we begin with a game of cards? Mm-mm. Well, I, I could read the newspaper to mm -hmm. you. I could write a letter for you. I know. I know. I'll sit right here, and you can tell me all about that wonderful baby you're expecting. Hmm? The baby you're expecting. Does Ripley know about this? I beg your pardon? Well, skip it. Uh, which is your bad leg? Well, neither one of them's working very well today. Oh, my head. Is your head bothering you? Terribly. Both of them. Would you like me to rub it for you? You couldn't think of anything nicer. Yeah. Now relax. Oh, close your eyes. Now just think of something pleasant. Mm. Pretty soon you'll be going home to your wife. Won't that be wonderful? Mm. Think what she looks like. 
How pretty she is. Mm, lovely. Mm. Beautiful blue eyes, oh. short nose, soft brown hair, and lovely kissable lips. Well, there's nothing wrong with your morale, young man. I'll recommend to the doctor that you be sent home to your wife immediately. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You're all dressed. Naturally. Well, uh, George. Hello, Randy. Son of a gun. What are you doing here? Enjoying myself immensely. His leg isn't even broken. No? No, it hey, isn't. Hey, Doc, what kind of nurses do you have around here, anyway? Hey, what I... goes on here, Ellen? Well, when I came in here, he was lying there all covered up, and he let me make an absolute idiot of myself. Rubbing his head. Both of them. Best cure in the world for a hangover. Oh. Ellen, this is George Jones, an old and untrustworthy friend of mine. Now, remember, I saw her first. George Jones. The name suits you perfectly, completely undistinguished. I wouldn't say that, honey. Someday you may wind up wearing it. Wait. Shall we go? <laughs> She's cute. It was pretty depressing having a medical student for a roommate. Oh? He was always dissecting something, including me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know what's going on inside if you expect to understand the outside. But, uh, excuse me, sir, but you're wanted at the hospital. There's an emergency. Oh, Rand, I'm sorry. So am I. Well, back to the salt mines. See you folks later. Okay. Not if I can help it. <laughs> I intend to keep you to myself for the rest of the afternoon. Oh? And for the next two weeks. Oh. When a lonely prospector strikes gold, he doesn't yell for his friends. He stakes a claim. Oh. How about some lunch? Yes, I'd love it. I don't like to make love on an empty stomach. No, neither do I. Especially to a perfect stranger. My Ellen, wherever did you get the idea that I was perfect? <laughs> oh, you. Uh, would you like to switch boxes like we did when we were kids? Naturally. Oh, brother. Fried chicken, mm -hmm. potato salad, tomatoes, <laughs> cookies, oh. Gay rations, canned ham, powdered milk, chewing gum, and four cigarettes. Coffee. Oh, honestly, is that the best you could do? That's the best I could do with no ration card. Oh. Now, if we were to combine forces, uh, pool our resources, I think we might do very well together. Here we go. Bye, George, and good luck. Thanks, man. Goodbye, Dad. Take care of yourself. I'll be back, honey. Remember that, I'll be back. Of course, of course. And I'll never let you go. Goodbye, <sighs> guys. Quite a guy. Yeah, quite a guy. I'm going to marry him, Ray. Marry him just as soon as he gets back. I figured as much. Are you sure he's right for you, Ellen? Oh, I don't know. It isn't something you think about. It's just something you feel, you know. You can't do anything about it. I know what you mean, Ellen. The guy with wings has it all over us fellas who walk around down here. I'm coming up now, dear. Do you want me to bring you anything? No. You all right? <laughs> what is it? What's the matter? Get a doctor. Just a... Here, no, it. no, not that. Get a doctor. Another doctor, not Graham. But I have to, dear. He is your doctor. Don't argue with me. Don't call Graham. Get another doctor. Still ticking. 
Sounds pretty good. You're evidently feeling better than when Alan called. What time is it? Five after nine, dear. Took you a long time to get here, Rennie. Oh, I know it seems like it, but he came just as soon as I called him. How long did it take? About 20 minutes. Fortunately, Ellen caught me as I was leaving on another call. Yes. Is there some alcohol in the bathroom? Yes, sir. Two minutes. I got that pain over 45 minutes ago. Why did you delay it? I now? didn't, dear. I, I lost a lot of time trying to get another doctor. But you needed him so badly, I had to. You know best. You always know best nowadays, don't you, Ellen? No, no, it isn't that. I, I just knew that he'd come sooner than anyone else. He's our friend, George. It's better already. Ready? let's not kid each other. We both know where I stand. My own insurance company wouldn't put a nickel on me. Now look here. All of us in that same boat. Automobile taking an unexpected turn. A brick falling from a high building. Heart condition like yours. They're all hazards, but that doesn't necessarily mean they'll ever happen. Think of all the chances you took during the war. You didn't worry about them. Came out feeling better when you went in. Now the only thing you have to do is lie here in bed and let us help you get well. Isn't that right, Ellen? Yes, that's what I keep telling him. You're lucky in many ways, George. You have a wonderful wife. She's developed into a fine nurse. I don't think I'll be tying up her exclusive services much longer. Now, you've got to cut out this way of thinking. Yeah, I know, I know. Would you mind, Ellen? Uh, I'd like to talk to George alone. No, no of course not. I'll, uh, I'll be across the hall if you need me. Those were pretty morbid things you were saying in front of Ellen. Has she complained? Certainly not. But you've got to think of her, too. She's looking a little worn. Now, when you get these ideas, try using a little mental therapy. Next, you'll be telling me I ought to see a psychiatrist. Might be a very good idea. You doctors are all alike. You can't cure a patient, you tell him it's all in his mind. I'm trying to help you, George. You know that. I'll drop in again this afternoon. Maybe we can talk this thing out. Yeah, maybe we can. Hello? Yes? Come downstairs, Ellen. I'll talk to you. Ellen, did anything particular happen to upset George this morning? No, not that I know of. Why, do you think he's worse? Frankly, I, I don't like his mental state. Well, I think maybe it's just the hot weather. Depresses him. He's been a very active man. It's natural for him to be depressed, but... Yes. When a man's at a low ebb mentally and physically, he's prone to all sorts of imaginary fears. Yes, I know. I'd feel better if he were in the hospital for a while. No, no, I don't think so. Well, you want what's best for George, don't you? Well, of course, that's just it. I think it would upset him terribly. You see, he doesn't seem to want anyone else around him except me. Well, this morning, he didn't even want me to call you. Oh, it isn't that he's disloyal, Ran, or has lost confidence, but lately, he seems to have taken these sudden dislikes to people. Look, Ellen. Yes? You and George aren't just patients, you're friends. George is up there brooding, and I don't like it. Could develop into something serious. If you won't send him to the hospital, I want you to have someone here to help you. I'm sure you know what's best, Rand, but honestly, I don't know how George will take it. Well, he doesn't even seem to want his aunt around anymore. Ellen, I don't think it's wise for you to try to handle this alone any longer. You're stressed to the breaking point already. I'll take it up with George this afternoon. All right. I'd better get back upstairs. No, Ellen. Let him relax for a while. All right. Give the medicine a chance to work. Yeah. I want you to relax, too. Remember now, you could call me anytime you need me, even if you just think you need me. Oh, thanks. I don't know what I'd do sometimes if I didn't remember that. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're doing fine. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Say, what are you all dressed up for? 
And where did you get that beautiful new tricycle? It's a tricycle. It's a horse. Oh? A paramino. My grandpa gave it to me. Oh, he did? Well, it's beautiful, Billy. I'm not Billy. I'm Hoppy. Hoppy? Now, who's Hoppy? Don't you know who Hoppy is? No, I'm afraid don't I don't. Don't you have television? What? Don't you have television? No. Want to see mine? Sure. Look inside. Well, look at that. See? Hoppy's there, too. Just like in a real color. Why, of course, I know him. That's Hopalong Cassidy. Uh -huh. Well, save many people today, Hoppy. Oh, six to a hundred. Don't try any tricks now. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Do you have any cookies? No, I haven't. See, the groceryman hasn't come yet, but I will have later. You know what I do with the bad men? No, what do you do? I dynamite them into little pieces, shot them, put them in jail. Oh, I don't think the real Hoppy would treat even bad men that way. Well, really what I did was my soon time up, throw them in jail. Well, that sounds like a lot more work and more dangerous, too. I had to take care of you, didn't I? Yeah, you sure did. Can I come in? Oh, well, honey, I I'm sorry. I'm afraid not. My husband isn't feeling very well today. See? I won't make any noise. If I was eating cookies, I couldn't even talk. Uh, no, you couldn't. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what you do. After the groceryman comes, that'll be around 12 o'clock, see? You come to the back door very quietly, and I'll have some cookies for you. Okay? Okay. I'll ride my horse up and down and see that no bad people make any noise. Because I'm your friend, aren't I? That's right, Hoppy. You're my friend. Toot <laughs> toot! I'm an engine, I'm an engine. I'm going to beat that car in the crossing. Toot toot! Toot toot! Toot toot! Toot toot! Well, George, you weren't out of bed just now, were you? No. Oh, it must be the heat. I could have sworn I saw what somebody took you right... so long? What, dear? It took you so long. Sorry, dear, I was talking to Billy. I should say Hoppy. Let me change your pillow. You know, he's the little boy I told you about who just moved into the neighborhood. The one with the glasses, you know. Oh, he's an awful sweet little kid. What were you talking to Rennie Graham about? That's what I'm interested in. We were talking about you, dear. He uh, thinks you worry too much about yourself. I didn't. I don't know who would. George, ever since you got out of bed yesterday to see if you could walk, I've had it on my mind. I want you to promise me not to get out of bed again while I'm out of the room. All right, Ellen. Did you... Call the druggist about getting the heart prescription filled? Yes, dear. He said he'd send it up later in the day. But there's enough there if we need it before. Did you tell him I'd spilled it? No, I didn't. Uh, do you feel well enough for the paper? Yeah. Editorial page? No, just the front page is all right, thank you. Here you are, dear. You look tired, Ellen. Oh, I'm not. Just that it's so hot today. What are you thinking about, Ellen? Well, you know, I, w I was just thinking that everything in our lives, every breath, every thought has been for ourselves. I don't think people can do that and be happy. Do you? You're getting a little confused, darling. It was me that Rennie Graham told to change my way of thinking. Oh, no, no. I mean, it was my fault, too. I... I just wasn't strong enough to help you. But we could change all that now. Ellen. Could make all the difference in the world, George. Come here, Ellen. Yes? What's the first thing you do? When? When I'm out of this bed again, away from the house. Oh, just be so grateful that you're well. I think I'd... Try to do something to somebody. I mean you. For your own self. Oh. I'd like children. Yeah. Yes. And then I'd like a garden. A real garden. Like the woman next door has. 
And I'd find out about flowers and things, and I'd compare notes with every other woman on the block. So you'd have a garden and children, huh? Yes. Oh, isn't it good to plan again? Kind of gives you something to hold on to, doesn't it? Oh, my, it takes a long time for things to sink in, doesn't it? But you always said that, George. You always said, make a plan for everything and then stick to it. All right. All right, our plan now is for you to get well. And then after. You must think I'm very stupid. Stupid? Don't you think I know you're in love with him? In love with whom? Graham. Well, well that's the silliest thing I ever heard of you. You're not as subtle as you think you are, Ellen. It's quite obvious. First, I thought it was just an infatuation, but now I realize it's more serious. Serious to the point where my life is more in danger from your heart than mine. George, what are you talking about? I almost feel sorry for you, Ellen. He overrated you, Ellen, just as he underrated me. You haven't the courage or the intelligence he thinks you have. Please don't talk like... Do you suppose I don't know he told you to rake over these old coals this morning? No, dear, he didn't. You convinced I... me I was a failure by making me impossible promises. I know something about my own sickness. I know what happens George. to a man when you take away his self-respect. I, I know, know what that. happens when you constantly upset me. George, this is wrong. I know it is. Please don't upset yourself anymore. Please. Ellen, that's what he told you to do, isn't it? Did no. he also tell you to delay getting help to me like you did this morning? How could you do that, Ellen? How could you take a man of second-rate intelligence George, like dear, that? we'll do anything you say. I'll get another doctor. You didn't know what you were letting you. yourself in for, did you, Ellen? Please don't talk anymore. Rest. Oh, George, you just couldn't believe those things you've said about Dr. Gray. I don't even want to hear his name. Leave it halfway up, Ellen. I was so hurt, I could hardly keep from crying. But again, I reminded myself that George was terribly ill and he didn't mean it. I knew I had to keep doing something, anything, anything to keep me from hearing George's words. He didn't mean them. He couldn't mean them. It was his illness, the heat. And when I took his lunch up to him, I'd be pleasant and cheerful as if nothing had happened. Oh, that's 
very nice. Are you sure you don't want to keep it yourself? We got a big television at home, a real one. This is just a pretend one. Well, I know it is, but it's very nice, and I want to thank you very much for giving it to me. Mommy says television is good for when you're sick. Mm. Daddy says it makes him sick. Oh. Mommy lets me look at television, so I stay in bed. Well, I think that's a very good idea. I'll have to tell my husband about that. Can I see him? I can play with him if he can't go outside. Oh, well, that's very nice of you, but I don't think he's well enough to see people, dear. I won't make any noise. I'll just eat my cookies and look. <laughs> well, perhaps in a week or two when he's feeling better, huh? Okay. My horse is sick. I got to go see my horse. Okay. Can I take some cookies for my horse? Oh, by all means, take as many as you like. I'll go see my horse now. All right. Say, honey, uh, are you sure you don't want to take that television set with you? The man can use it, but tell him not to break it, because i got to use it later. Well, all right, I'll tell him. And thank you again, Hoppy. Bye. Bye. I always felt better after talking with Hoppy. I wondered how he'd look without his glasses. It's a nice thing that that kid to do. Don't break it, because I have to use it again. <laughs> George wanted his lunch. That was a good sign. I wanted to stop a minute and chat with neighbors, but I knew George wouldn't like it. He didn't believe in neighbors. And then I saw the postman. Especially with this mailbag. Looks heavy, all right. Well, if I'm all in now, I wonder what I'm going to be like this afternoon. Well, I guess I'll live. Yeah. Everything's so high, I've got to keep my nose to the grindstone. Yeah. Got a pension plan. Did I tell you about it? Yes, you did. Well, uh, you got to follow it to a T. Every penny counts. Yes. Uh, you know, my wife doesn't understand that. She says I'm an old penny pincher. No. But I told her hey, that... Mr. Carson, would you take this letter for me, please? 
Thanks. I swear, I bring in more mail than I take out. Well, I'm sorry. I'd run up to the mailbox with it myself, but I don't like to leave the house along with my husband being ill and all, you know. No, I never figures how it slows me up lugging everybody's mail around this awful heat. I'm sorry. My feet are th throbbing. Your, your feet ever... Yeah, I know just what you mean. You know, exactly. I ought to be way out in Pine Avenue and Merritt Street, but no, with the oh. way I'm going, I won't be out there till 1 o'clock. But with everybody giving me mail to take back. Is, is that mail for me? Huh? The, that mail, is it mine? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> Thank me. Thank you. It's all right. It's that retirement plan that keeps me going. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Mr. Well, Garcia. You're welcome. Well, glad to see your husband's well enough to be up, Mrs. Jones. Goodbye. I wish I could lie down for a while. George, you were out of bed, and you promised me you, know, you wouldn't. I can't get out of bed in my condition. But dear, the postman said he saw you at the window. Did he really? Well, no, he, he didn't actually say he saw you. The postman's got a touch of sunstroke. Yeah, me too, I guess. Oh, hot wind certainly doesn't help much. You finished? Yes, very nice, thank you. I'm glad you got that letter off. Come over here, Ellen. Sit down. Would you like your Aunt Clara to come up and visit for a little while today? Mm, it's pretty hot for the old girl. Oh, she'd love it if you asked for her. You're the apple of her eye, you know. <laughs> I always was. You know, Aunt Clara gave me a toy when I was a kid. A toy I was crazy about. My mother used to tell her she... Gave me too much, but I can still remember that toy. Oh. It was a, a bottle with a small, absolutely perfect sailing ship built inside of it. You know, I was... I was so crazy about that toy, I wouldn't let anybody touch it. Oh? Not even my mother. One day I was making a garden in the... Oh, thank you, dear. Making a garden in the backyard. A neighbor boy came running out of my house with my ship in his hand. Somehow I... Got it away from him without breaking it. I don't know what I said to him, but he looked awfully scared and white. And suddenly I was frightened, too, thinking he might have broken it, the ship, I mean. I picked up the little rake I'd been playing with and began hitting him with it. And when his face had been so white, it was all blood. I think I might have killed him if Mother hadn't come out. She took him into the house and at the bathroom washed his face. They were both so excited that I felt safe. I had my little ship again. When the neighbor boy stopped crying, Mother turned to me and she said, give it to him. She sounded so strange and quiet, I knew I had to. He held out his hand. I could see he hadn't learned anything, so I handed him the ship. But just as he was about to take it, I let it drop on the tile floor and I stepped on it. <laughs> He'd never have known what it was, but somehow or other it was mine. Mine more than it had ever been before. I remembered every little perfect thing about that ship. But to them it was just a mess of broken glass and matchsticks on the bathroom floor. Ellen, you know who that neighbor boy looked like? You know, very much like Graham. You're Dr. Graham who's going to find himself in exactly the same position as that little boy. But we're not going to have him here again. But that doesn't change the fact that you're wrong about him. He's been wonderful to you, so thoughtful and given you so much time. Maybe that's because he's a bachelor, huh? No home life. He's been a good friend to us. Ellen, time's limited, so you must listen carefully. Randy Graham may have you, all right. But he'll be disappointed with what he gets. George, please. George, I, I, I can't let you talk this way anymore. I'll fill this up.
I'll be downstairs if you want me. You'd better wait, Ellen. I've written a district attorney asking him to make a complete investigation if anything happens to me today before he can get help to me. Why do you torture yourself like this? Why do you imagine things that don't exist? <laughs> a letter exists. It proves you're trying to kill me. But I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> if I can't help you, George, then I'm going to get someone else in who can. It's not me that needs help now, Ellen. You gave that letter to the postman yourself just a while ago. Yes, yes, I gave him the letter, the one that you wrote about insurance policies. Yeah. I knew you wouldn't recognize a district attorney's name if you saw it. Nobody ever does. Isn't that strange? Everybody knows he's a district attorney, but nobody ever knows his name. We are going to get someone else in, another doctor. Because this is all in your mind. My mind is fine. Just to reassure you on that point, let me tell you that letter was about insurance. I told the district attorney how much insurance we had on each other's lives. If either one of us died, the other would do very nicely for the rest of his life. Or oh, her life, very comfortably indeed. Oh. I also told him how you and Dr. Graham, how you were working together to aggravate my condition so it wouldn't look like murder. George! I also told him how you were gradually giving me overdoses of the heart medicine. But that isn't true. Anyone would know that isn't true. Would they? Why is that bottle almost empty, huh? We only got it the other day. Well, you... You told me that you spilled it on the tray. You told me that yourself, George. You didn't tell the druggist that. Oh, Mr. Phillips will make an excellent witness against you, Ellen. He'll be the first if anything happens to me. And let me tell you, there'll be others. The letter takes care of everything. The druggist, the medicine, the doctor. He's in it, too. Oh, you've implicated your old friend Graham, you know. Nothing's going to happen to you. I don't know whether you're doing this to frighten me or not, but I'm going downstairs and get that letter back from that postman. You're not going any place anymore, Ellen. Because I'm going to kill you. Yeah, I decided that definitely this morning. <laughs> you, you, you couldn't mean this, George. You couldn't. George, you know I wouldn't hurt anybody. Anybody, much less you. George, think it's me, it's Ellen, it's Ellen. But you did want to be rid of me. It was in your mind, that's why you feel so guilty, isn't it? No. The letter will take care of Graham, I'll take care of you myself. I'll make it look like self-defense. Please don't. There are just too many things against you, Ellen. You used to say that you were lonesome until you met me. George. George, you love me. I love you, George. And since I've been sick, since he's been coming to the house, you've hated this. I love me. No, I haven't. one of those awful dreams. The kind I used to have when George was overseas. That man lying there was George, my husband. He was dead. And he died trying to kill me. What is it that you want, Mr. Phillips? Well, it's about that heart medicine you want refilled. Yes? Can't refill it without another prescription. I see. We'll just let it go. Let it go? That is, until I talk with Dr. Graham. Oh. By the way, Mrs. Jones, according to my records, you got that prescription filled just the other day. But my husband knocked that bottle over on the tray and spilled it. That's what happened. I promise you, that's what happened, Mr. Phillips. All right, all right, Mrs. Jones. You don't have to promise anything. I didn't tell you before because I didn't think it was necessary. Well, it wasn't. Look here, Mrs. Jones, I didn't... George right. said that Mr. Phillips would be a witness against me. I just thought it was such a 
Who it? Got that prescription filled. I warned you, that's all. Yes. I'll see that you get another prescription. Yes, you just get in touch with Dr. Graham. Oh, why didn't I tell him about George? That letter. I had to get that letter back. I couldn't tell anyone about George until I got that letter back. I could feel the woman next door watching me. Maybe she'd be a witness against me, too. She could tell them how I ran out of the house and then back in again. How strangely I was acting. It wouldn't matter what she thought if I could only get that letter back. And I tried to think, which way did he go? That way towards Merritt Street, you know. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. You know, every time I go home at night, I always tell my wife, Laura, if it wasn't for that pension plan of yeah. you, I, I I just never get up. I just drop my tracks I one of these days that. and let it settle it. I just never get up anymore, and that's all. You know how it Hello, is. Hello, Mr. Carson. Have... Uh, see you later, Joe. Yeah, uh, see you later, Mr. Well, <laughs> Jones, what are you doing out this way? I was visiting a friend. Oh, that's nice. I wish I had more time for visiting. <laughs> but by the time I get home at night, I can just hardly make it up the stairs. I tell Mr. my Carson, wife remember, that... Mr. Carson, remember that letter I gave you this morning? I suppose so. I pick up funny letters. Why, yeah. what about it? Well, I, I know it seems silly, but I... I mailed it by mistake. It wasn't even finished. No. Yeah. Now, what did you do that for? Well, I don't know. I guess I was just well, so... Well, finish it up and mail the rest of it tomorrow. <laughs> They'll get it into the installment. Now, you wouldn't want me to do that. May I have the letter, please? First, I pick them up and carry them around for miles, and then they want them back again. Well, I'm sorry, but you can understand why... I wouldn't want it to go out unfinished. Yeah, I guess so, but all these delays count. Keep me on my feet longer than I ought to be. Well, it won't be much trouble, will it? Yes. Yeah, oh. here it is. Thank you. Now, look, you shouldn't have given me this letter in the first place. Why? Giving me this letter is just like putting it in the mailbox. Now, you wouldn't expect to get this back from the mailbox, would you? No, but oh, surely you can make this impression. After all, I... Uh, isn't this, uh, this fellow the district attorney? Yes. Hmm. He, yes, my my husband read about some graft in the newspaper, and he wrote to the district attorney about it. Oh, your yeah. husband wrote the letter. Yes. Uh -huh. But you said you wrote it. Well, what's the difference? He's my husband. Oh, it makes all the difference in the world, Mrs. Jones. But why? It's one of our strictest rules. We can't return a letter to anyone except the person who wrote it. But, Mr. Carston, my husband's sick. You know that, yes. and he sent me to get the letter yes, back. Yes, I know that. Oh, don't be so obstinate. You know it's all right. He's sick. Give it to me. Obstinate? Now, how do you like that? After standing here patiently in all this heat trying to reason with you. You're the one that's being obstinate. You don't seem to realize it's against the rules. Well, what do you care if it is against the rules? I you? have to care, but you don't. You're not the one who'd get fired. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, Mr. Carson. I forgot what it means to you, your, your responsibility and all. It must be this terrible heat. Uh, please... I know how anxious my husband is to get that letter back. It was my fault, you see. I, I mailed it by mistake. He's awfully upset with me. He's very angry with me, Mr. Carston. Couldn't you please help me? Couldn't I please have the letter back? Well, tell what it'll do. Yes? I'm all through the route until this afternoon's delivery, and yeah. since it's so important, like you say... Oh, it is. Well, if you'll give me a lift back to town in your car so as I won't lose any more time... I will. I'll go over to your house with you right now and give the letter to Mr. Jones personally. No, no, you can't. But, Mrs. Jones, this way I'll be sticking to the rules and your husband will get his letter back. But, but my husband didn't sleep last night. 
And he fell asleep just before I left, and I wouldn't want to wake you. I'm trying to do the right thing by everybody concerned. But it seems to me you don't want to cooperate, and I'm not going to risk losing my job for anybody. I'll try to understand. No, I, I can't talk about it any longer. Can't waste any more time. Do you want me to take the letter to your husband personally, or don't you? No. All right, then I'll take it to the post office like I'm supposed to. You can go down there and get it from the superintendent. Superintendent? Yeah, he's got more authority than I have. Maybe he'll give it to you. I see. But you better not waste any more time. Once I bring the mail in, they send it out right quick. Oh. Once it leaves the post office for delivery, nobody can stop it. The post office downtown? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Oh, Mr. Carson, uh, how do I get there? The shortest way I'm... Uh, right on down the boulevard, shortest. You can't miss it. Thanks. Uh, how much time do I have to get? Oh, about 2.30, maybe a little before. morning? Yes, she uh, went out about half hour ago. Went out? Yes. But what about George? Mr. Jones? She hasn't gone off and left him alone, has she? Well, my husband's sick, you know. So I've heard. Of course, I never really met them, though I haven't lived here long. I can't imagine her going off like that. <laughs> I'm Mr. Jones's aunt. I made him some jellied consomme. I packed it in ice. It's melting. I never dreamt I wouldn't get in. I could tell you where the key is. Key? Perhaps you'll think it's nosy, but I happened to see her when she locked the door. Well, isn't that good of you? The front door? Yes, it's right over there, above the door. Thank you. I don't know how you stand in the sun without a hat on. I dry up like a pea. The top of the green shutter, the far side of the door. I found it. If there's anything I can do for you, just call me. You'll be very kind. Have you been upstairs? Well, I was just going up. Oh. Why are you so out of breath? Why, I've been running and I... Running in all this heat, just to have more sense. Why, how did you get in, Aunt Claire? I found the key on the ledge. Oh, there, look at that. Stripped right down my dress. Now it's ruined. I was worried half to death. I thought something had happened. Happened? I never known you to go off like this. How's George? He's all right. Well, I even rang the bell. Just a jab. Is he taking one of those sedatives? Yes. Oh, people take too much medicine nowadays, if you ask me. When I was a girl, we had homeopathic doctors. Wonder what ever happened to them. Anyway, they gave you very little medicine, and all of it tasted good, even with tonics. And no barbicels at all. Well, and I've never seen you look so tired and worn out. Why don't you ask that doctor to give you something? Oh, I'm all right. Looks a little young to me to be a good doctor. 
But after all, if you and George like him so much, confidence is half the battle. Oh, you look awful, Peaky. Well, I'm, you're not letting yourself go, are you, dear? Oh, I, I, I know I look terrible. When George fell asleep, I, I, I had some errands to do. And I, I'll get you some. I, I, I just thought I'd, I'd go and take care of them without bothering to change. You know how it is. Are you sure you're all right? Yes. Why don't you go upstairs and lie down for a bit, dear? Take a little snooze. It'll do you good. I, I'm not tired. Really, I'm not. Well, after all. Oh, Clara, I have so much to do today. Oh, sit down, Ellen. Lean back. Relax. You'll be on your back before you know it if you don't watch out. After all, all I want to do is to help. From now on, I'm going to have more time, too. Oh, Ellen, I forgot to tell you. I resigned. Resigned? From the Helpers Guild, after 15 years, I'm not helping anymore. I'll, um, I'll leave the kitchen door open, and, and then we can talk while I'm cleaning up out there, all right? Oh, you might as well, you're so fidgety. Oh, Ellen, while you're on your feet, will you bring me a damp cloth? For 15 years, I was in that guild. And for the past five, I was treasurer. And for the last three, they were promising me the presidency. So what happens? Last Tuesday, they let Cora Comstock, you know, Zachary's brother's wife. Well, I was furious. Zachary said I was hasty. But after 15 years, you know, I've never known a small woman yet who wasn't always boasting about her little hands and tiny feet and trying to run everything. The best I can well, do. You think I was right? 15 years, after all, Zachary was upset. He says I need lots of outside activity, lots. And I agree. I thought if she didn't stop, I'd scream. I always tell him he plays too much at his age. But that's just one of the worries of being married to an older man. Oh, Alice, why don't you have some of that jelly consomme? At least it was jelly when I left home. Tried, it's tasty, and it's full of vitamins. I'd like someone to enjoy. After all, it ruined my dress. Oh, I think I'll run up and pop in on George. If he's asleep, you can tell him later that I peeked it. It's Clara! Clara! What is it, Ellen? Okay. There's something I must tell you. Well, what is it, dear? What's the matter? I... Are you having trouble? Yes. Yeah, I didn't want to tell you, but now I think that I must. Don't. Take my advice and don't. You'll only be sorry later that you did. I thought it was funny your being out like that and not going up to see George when you came in. But you don't understand. Oh, I... Yes, I understand. I'll just say goodbye to it. No, please don't. I, did, I, I didn't want to tell you this, but George said that the, the last time you came to see him, you upset him terribly. And he said to tell you that if you came again today to tell you that he just couldn't see you. Upset him? You must remember he's ill. Upset him? Well, I've a good mind to tell him something. No, please! Well, I wouldn't think of humiliating myself. He knew I was here all the time. Well, he's rude, mean, and selfish before he was sick, and he's rude, mean, and selfish since he's been sick. I'm sorry I had to tell you this. Well, I thought when I first met you, you'd do something for him, change him somehow. But I must say, he hasn't changed at all. He's worse, if anything. And, Ellen, you can tell George for me that a man wrapped up in himself makes a very small package. I wondered how much time I had. She was right, I must look awful. I had to fix myself up before I could go to the post office. I had to go in there. I was terrified, but I knew I had to. I mustn't think about anything, anything, until I get that letter back. That letter that said I killed him. Maybe it was a dream. No, it wasn't. I must fix my face. I must look presentable. Like any other housewife making a simple request for a letter. A letter that was mailed by mistake. gun. It 
was still in George's hand. Somehow I knew I shouldn't leave it there. I just turned it off. Need any help? No. N no, everything's all right. I see you. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Hi. Got you. I prayed that no one else had heard that shot. I thought perhaps if I didn't answer, he'd think no one was home and he'd go away. But he didn't. He just rang the bell again and then stood there. Then I knew I had to get rid of him. Yes? Good afternoon. I'm Mr. Russell. Yes? I'd like to see Mr. Jones. He's expecting me. Expecting you? Yes. He telephoned me the other day. Well, there must be some mistake. My husband is not well. He isn't able to leave his bed. He told me he was ill, but he did oh. telephone to be here this afternoon. Well, nevertheless, he isn't well enough to see anyone. But it's a business matter, Mrs. Jones. I'm sorry. But the doctors forbid him to see anyone. He warned me that I'd get some resistance from you. He did? He explained that you were over solicitous about his health, but that I wasn't to take you seriously. Your husband only wants me to authenticate some legal papers. I'm a notary. Won't take but a few minutes. I'm sorry, I've already told you he isn't well enough. He's had a relapse. The doctor just left here a few minutes ago. And he said he wasn't able to see anyone today. Not anyone. Well, I'm sorry to have bothered you, Miss Jones. Oh, that's all right. I'll leave my card. Perhaps you'll call me. It's yes. Better. Yes, I'll call you. Good afternoon. Goodbye. He'd be another witness. Couldn't think what I'd said to him. Oh, I'd have to be more careful. Suddenly I remembered what happened the last time. I had to be sure no one could get into the house. Be more careful, will you? Don't you ever do a thing like that again, you hear me? Okay. My horse ate up all the cookies. Well, I'll give you some more later on. After that? Yes, after that. Now, you stay right there in that driveway until I get out. You understand? Okay. All I remember about the drive downtown was... I kept thinking, this time I must control myself. I must keep calm. We caught it in plenty of time, Mrs. Jones. It was brought in just a little while ago. It wasn't even processed yet. Then I can have it now? Of course. Oh, thank heaven. I'm glad we caught it in time for you. My husband will be so pleased to have it back. 
I'll give you one of our regular forms here. And... Form? Yes, uh, one of these. Oh. Y you mean I can't take the letter with me now? Well, just take the form home to Mr. Jones, have him fill it out, and uh, when you bring it back, I'll have the letter right here, and I'll give it to you. But, but why is that necessary? <laughs> just regulations. Oh. Among other things, it'll give me a chance to compare Mr. Jones's handwriting with the writing on the envelope. Well, I can assure you, it's my husband's handwriting. Yes, I'm sure, yes. Yes. But I must have one of those forms for my records. Oh. But, uh... But, but my husband's been very ill, and everything bothers him so. And if I don't have this letter for him when I go home, he'll be awfully upset. Why should he? Well, you see, uh, I I'm afraid that he said a lot of very strong things, and he regrets them now. You can explain to him that uh, it won't be delivered. It'll be held right here till the form comes back. Yeah, it? but it's so hard to reason with a person who who's ill. Well, you know how it is. They, they, uh exaggerate the importance of everything. And what with his heart condition, I wouldn't want to take a chance. Really, I, I, I must have the letter for him when I go home now. I, I must. Mrs. Jones, I think I can take a chance. Thank you. I'll let you fill out the form for your husband. Oh, that's very nice. On one condition. Yes. I, of course, must make sure the contents of the letter. What do you mean? It'll be strictly confidential, but of course the letter must be opened and read. Open the letter? Yes, to make sure that it is the letter to the district attorney, as you say. No, no, you can't. I beg your pardon. I won't have anyone prying into my husband's mail. Prying? I want that letter back, you understand? Unopened. Mrs. Jones, I was about to tell you, if you'd let me finish, that I would call your husband for you. Explain the situation reasonably and ask his permission for you to open the letter, not me. Very sorry, I, I didn't mean to say that. But you don't seem to understand. No, I don't understand, Mrs. Jones. And I have no alternative but to send the letter on through to the distributing room. Good day. Jones. Mr. Jones. I don't want to intrude, but I couldn't help noticing you all day long. I've had the feeling that you... that something was wrong. And I'd so like to be able to help you. Oh, I know we haven't been too neighborly, but trouble's something else again. Can I help you? Is there something I can do for you? Of course, I know you're anxious to get up to your husband. So you run out and see if he's comfortable and settled. And then you come over. Or call me. I'll be waiting for you. She was kind. She might have been my friend. She might have helped me. And I remembered Rand. He said he was going to stop in again to see George. I couldn't let him do that. He mustn't come here again. Ever. Dr. Graham's office. Hello, this is Mrs. Jones. Is Dr. Graham there? Oh, he isn't here, Mrs. Jones. Can you locate him, please, as urgent? Please do. It's very important that Dr. Graham doesn't come here today. Now, I hope you understand. Of course. I'll do my best. Goodbye. Bye. Doctor, I just called your office and I 
I've just told you, nurse, that I... Well, uh, George felt he wanted to consult another doctor. A and I did, too, and, and he just left, and... And I really think it would be better if you didn't see him again today. Oh? Uh, but, what, uh, what doctor did you call? Oh, uh... Um... I'm sorry, I've forgotten his name. I, I called the living store for her doctor, and she gave me his telephone number, and, uh... George liked him very much. I see. Yes. Is he a heart specialist? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that is, I, I think so. Mm -hmm. What was his diagnosis? I don't know. I, really, George is feeling much better. I'll call you tomorrow. Now, wait a minute. What's happened, really? Well, you see, after... No, no, please don't, please. Don't go up there. It's better for everybody if you just don't go up there. A gun. He tried to kill me, but before I could shoot, he. He. Now take it easy, Ellen. Take it easy. And so I took the gun out of his hand, and I hid it. I had to. It looked as though he died protecting himself from me. All right, Helen, but why didn't you want me here? I don't know how to tell you. That letter said that, that we planned his death together. That you told me to aggravate his condition, to give him overdoses of his heart medicine. And if they come here and find you here, they'll think it's true, just like George said. Helen, his mind was going. I tried to tell you this morning. He wasn't responsible. They won't believe me. How could they? I did everything wrong. Everything, just like he said I would. The druggist, and then the postman, and then the superintendent. And I even lied to his aunt. They'll all think I was guilty, all of them. You're not guilty, Helen. Remember that. Oh, I, I, I know. The police will be here any minute. Now, you better go. You better go right now. Helen, where are you going? I, 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 I don't know. There's no sense in running away now. Go to the door. Hello, Miss Jones. I uh, got a letter for you this afternoon. I didn't put it in the slot because, well, I, I guess I should feel kind of funny coming here like this after what happened between you and me this noon. But it's all right. I understand. Uh, here's the letter you gave me to mail this morning. What? Surprised I didn't realize it at first, a thick letter like that and only one stamp. Those public officials like the district attorney won't accept postage due mail, you know. Insufficient postage. Yeah, the other end just won't uh, pay the postage in these cases, and we have to return to the senders. How do you like that? Not enough postage, and we have to deliver them twice. Yes. Crazy business. You know, some folks might think I'm stingy. I know these extra stamps cost only just a few cents, but... Yes, I understand. If I multiply you by everybody else... 
Yes, I, I understand. And mm. Thanks again for the letter, Mr. Carson. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye. And thanks again, Mr. Carson, oh, for bringing the letter. Welcome. <laughs> oh. oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. Go ahead, it'll do you good. <laughs> You know, I, I, I tried so, so hard to get it back. It's all right, Ellen. You've got it now. <laughs> people meant when they said their heart was broken. All that was left of George and me in our marriage was that little pile of ashes. I knew that somewhere, somehow, I'd have to begin to live again. But right then, all I could do was pray to lose that one day, that one terrifying day. <laughs> 